Hey guys, welcome to another episode. This is episode three. Tonight we got a very special guest. This is my boy, all the way from El Segundo, California. This is Jose Ruiz, also known on the streets as Joey. How you doing tonight, bro? I'm doing good. Good. How are you doing, man? I haven't talked to you in a while. Yeah, man. Um, since you moved down to the dirty south, bro, it's uh. It's been quiet out here in the West. Oh, yeah, man. I, you know, I miss you guys. I've been hanging out here, raising a family, you know. You got to do what you got to do. Wow. But uh, it'll take some time before I come out there, but I will make it out there. We'll hang out again. Yeah, man. We got to fucking uh, skate it up, soap it up, and uh, do what we do, get crazy. Um, up in the rails, man. So I'm wondering, can you can you take us back to... You know, 1996, 97, and kind of give us an inside view of how you got into this. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, back in ninety, back in the nineties, man, it was a whole, it was a different lifestyle when it came to skateboarding and inline skating. So, uh, pretty much, uh, as an inline skater, you wanted to find a, a way to kind of combine both lifestyles into one as uh, everybody was separated, you know, skateboarders didn't like the inline skaters, inline skaters didn't like the skateboarders, but the company came out, Soap Shoes, and, uh, and they, they tried to integrate both lifestyles hmm. by creating a set of shoes that you could skateboard and bust out ollies and stuff and at the same time be able to go and hit up the rails and uh you know try to end the separate the, the separate lifestyles by combining them both into one and it was successful for 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 a good a good time but uh, i never hit the mainstream as big as it should have you know it never doesn't mean it won't it just uh, it never happened in the 90s but it seems like the youth nowadays uh, are a lot different. You know, they're 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 not so much like it was in the '90s. Everybody wants to, you know, uh, it's they're more equal. You know, they want to. They, they you don't hear people, you know, segregating the the inline skaters and calling each other's each other's names. You know, they just uh, try to do things together now. It seems like, and uh, it might be able to, you know, hit the mainstream again. I'm looking forward to that. Like the second coming, that would be pretty crazy. What um, yeah. I know back in the day, there was a lot of beef, especially in El Segundo. You know, being a primary skateboarder town, and you know us rollerbladers were minority for sure. And yeah, for sure, man. I remember that you and I, we we had um a couple scuffles with a lot of the skateboarders over there, and like that one time um when Eddie. Eddie Ramirez pulled that uh, hammer out of his backpack onto Jerry Dillon because he was like trying to start some shit with us, bro. Like, where where do you think that beef spawns from? You know, it just uh, it comes from my my my, my opinion was uh, they you know that the the skateboarders would look at you uh, uh, you know they they can't carry their skateboards down the hallway. And they're not able to, you know, bust out tricks and show off in front of the girls that they like. So they kind of, you know, maybe it's a little bit of a jealousy thing. And they, they, they seen us rollerbladers able to slide on handrails with just shoes. And they, they didn't like it. So they try to start shit by calling you names or talking behind your back, you know, and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, it, 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 you, you just never really know, man. I mean, could be other reasons. It could be just, uh, I'm like, remember the time that we were at the park and somebody, some, some skateboarder tried to hit you in the back of the head with a skateboard be, from behind your back, you know, and, and we had to stop him from behind so he wouldn't hit you. And then his brother started shit with you in, mm -hmm. in school, you know, at the, at the next day in a big group, try to jump you and shit. That, that was stupid, you know, those, those days are over I think now I don't think that shit's gonna happen it's no beef like that like it used to be yeah it seems like uh, a lot more family oriented when I go down there and I don't just see you know primarily in the 90s it was 
rollerbladers, skateboarders, and, and BMX bikers at the skate park. And now I see Razor scooters. I see kids on Haley shoes on the half pipe. Um, what else did I yeah. see? Um, they have some other hybrid sports that are out there. And I was talking to um, Greg a couple months ago. And apparently he was at the skate park on a unicycle. Fucking uh, he okay. going on the half pipe on the... I was like, wow, that's that's insane, bro. Like, I'm not dropping in on that shit. Fuck. Yeah, hell yeah. There's a lot of people that are doing different things with, di you know, different type of uh, ways to have fun, man. Uh, you know, I've seen people with, uh, it's not just uh, skateboards now. They use the snake boards and they're doing crazy shit. And I don't even know how to ride one of those. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just about fun, man. It's just about how to make it fun. And I think that nowadays most of the kids and this generation is is learning how to, coexist with the skateboarders and the inline skaters alike and and they're able to have fun without getting into altercations and uh if you go to a skate park it's not just about one sport it's about just anybody that can do whatever they want to do to have some fun and if they're able to spend the time doing that what they do best and they get admired for it you know I feel uh, that for sure. So I, I think I think there's a lot of good things to look up to in the near future with the soap shoes, and uh, I'm looking forward to it, man. I always felt back in the day like, you know, the original designers that was supposed to be for everyone in the skating community, rollerbladers and skateboarders alike, because you know you can you can soap and practice royals and unities, but you can also you know pretend you're doing fifty fifty grinds like you have a skateboard, you just don't have it with you and. Um, it seemed like it took on t for some skateboarders and others completely hated the sport and they were just like, no, that's soap shoes. That's for, for fucking fruit booters. And uh, they wouldn't even touch it. It was that shit kind of tripped me out. And then some other skateboarders were like, oh, I'm down with this, bro. Like now I don't have to drag my board around. I can still grind, but uh, I don't have to fucking be carrying my board everywhere I go and shit. Exactly, man. It's it's. It, it, it changed uh, the it changed the the outlook and this and the skateboarding alone because uh, now you can you know wear your shoes and there's shoes that that are perfectly fine for skateboarders but you can get off your your board and you can do something that's uh, a little more entertaining when when you don't you can't carry your board around you know mm. you can't you don't have to stick you know you can you don't have to walk around the hallways in school with your board you just walk around with your shoes and then bust out on the rail, especially if you're doing tricks that you can normally do on inline skates. If, if they're starting to design the soaps in a way that you can, you can bust out the tricks that you normally would only be able to do on inline skates, like the Royals and the, you know, top side alleys, uh, acids, uh, mm -hmm. and all kinds of different stuff, you know, that you can do that you could only do on skates. And you, now you can do it on soap shoes. You know, the sky's the limit, man. It's going to change the way that people look at it, at, at soap shoes and, as a whole. And, uh, you know, I think that it'll be a lot of fun. That's pretty badass, man. I remember back in the day, we used to, um, you know, when we have um, Mr. Crystal's class, and we'd be, um, you know, we'd ditch class to go smoke a cigarette, and then we'd just have our soaps on already, and we'd walk down into the quad and start busting on the corner rail and the gold rail. And um, it was a lot different once we started soaping because, you know, before we wanted to skate, we had to go to our locker. We had to take off our, you know, our shoes, our Jordans or whatever we we're wearing, strap up and then go skate and then have to, like, come back and take our skates back off. And then, uh, you know, put our shoes hassle. back on and go back to class. Yeah, it, it eliminated the hassle. Yeah, for sure, man. It, it made it more fun, too, you know, I mean... Remember the, you know, we used to, we used to have to put on the skates every single morning. Uh, we'd, we'd go out. We only had 30 minutes to practice. Uh, and then, you know, we'd do it right before detention or whatever. We'd go to school early. I would find an excuse to, you know, go out and, uh, you know, leave, leave my house earlier than usual to go, go to school because I just wanted to practice. And we got together. We did some tricks and, you know, 
needless to say, inline skating is what opened up the sport for soap shoes because without inline skating, we would have, soap shoes would never be around. And right. and uh, it, it took a lot of talent before you, you got a bunch of people together to get try on those shoes and start doing crazy stuff like you started doing, you know, jumping on those long-ass rails at the beach, man. That, nobody was doing that back then. And we knew some pretty good inline skaters, you know, so no, nobody was doing that stuff. Uh, in fact, you know, it's hard to even find people doing that stuff right now. But, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we, we've already hit our prime in that type of stage, so it's not like we can go out and do stuff like that. It's now a new, it's, it's somebody else's turn, and it's the new generation that's going to take this sport to the new limit. I like that. I like that. And, you know, yeah, yeah, man. People like, uh, you know, in Australia and stuff, they're, 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 they're all into it. They like it, and, uh, you know. That state, that country might be the one that takes it to the next level, man, and that brings it back. You know, you never know. I feel that. Like, I've uh, been following uh, Greg Krellin for a while and watching him and all his crew from the Melbourne Soapers and they, the videos that they're posting. It looks like it's, it's interesting, the time delay, you know, whereas, uh, you know, my kids live in England, and over in England, they still haven't even heard of soap shoes, and here it is 16, 17 years later. And they're just now, you know, getting to Australia where it's not that they, they weren't there before, but there was no buzz, you know, like as if we didn't do some of the tours that should have been done over there. But, you know, it seems like the word is spreading. And um, I think to, to quote Greg, he, Greg, he was saying, uh, it's not dead underground. We're still out here doing it. Like whether people, whether it's mainstream or not, he's like, they're still in the streets fucking hitting up rails and... It's, it's kind of impressive, Absolutely. man. Yeah, and if you think about it, I mean, back in the 90s, you know, you didn't have uh, the Internet as, as it wasn't as widespread as it is now. So if it's if, if I must say anything, it's the perfect time to get into the sport. Hmm. And it is a sport because uh, it, it's not easy to do what soapers do, man. They they you can you can damage yourself pretty bad. If you don't know what you're doing, but it takes guts and it takes overcoming a lot of fear to be able to bust out the tricks that nobody else wants to do. The moment, I mean, and I used to feel this way, the, before you jump on a handrail, you just got to overcome that fear, man. Mm. And uh, that's what we had to do, man. We had to do in the 90s. We we did it, but we had a video camera to videotape our, our success, to videotape our experiences. But we didn't, never had an ability to share the videos widespread the way people do nowadays, and this generation does. And when when they overcome those fears, they'll be able to share it with the world Ooh. by uploading it on YouTube, which was never around when we were doing this stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's got a lot of potential. So, uh, you know, this is the time to do it if you're going to do it. So Australia... More power to you. Yeah. You take it to a new level, man. <laughs> Cheers. Um, those are powerful words. Can you go into that a little deeper when you're saying overcome your fear? And uh, that's... I, I remember that one thing I really admired about you, Jose, was that you had this ability to just fucking look at something that another guy might think is impossible. I, You know... A lot of people, you know, guys at home don't know. The first day Jose was on skates, he backslid a six-step handrail. And uh, that's kind of unheard of. You know, usually you build up to stuff like that. And here, you know, when you put on those K2s, you're like, fuck this shit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a skater. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And you jump on fucking one-footed, nailed it, landed it. And uh, that was that was insane. And... You know, what, what goes through your mind when you're doing a trick like that? Now, obviously, you're very, like, mentally committed to it. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, when I first put on the skates for the ver very uh, first time, those K2s, they, they felt like they were just part of my feet, you know? And, uh, and you got to feel a sense of comfort before you can uh, you can even start skating. And when I when I put those skates on, you know, it was just uh, you know, I I seen how you did it, and I seen how you were able to manage to overcome your own fears yourself. And uh, I took that very first step to overcome the fear of 
eating shit and <laughs> busting myself up, you know, by just doing it, man. And just, uh, and the skates felt good on my feet. I felt comfortable, but right before the jump, you just have to take a leap of faith, man. Kind of like your song. You've got to take a leap of faith. And when you make that leap of faith, you're either going to fail or you're going to succeed. And if you fail, you can take that as a learning experience because you're not going to, you're not really failing because you're, you're learning not to do this, the thing that made you fall. So, um, either you're going to overcome the fear. And once you overcome that fear, you just will, will continue to do it over and over and over again, because you know that you've done it once you can do it again. And that's pretty much the steps I took with any new trick that I try to learn. Uh, that's with, uh, with, with rails, you know, with, uh, with anything that I try to learn that was new when it came to skating. I just overcame the fear by no, because I knew that if I succeeded, I would be able to continue to succeed at, at, at doing it. So that's, um, that's a really positive mindset to have. So essentially you're saying you can't really lose. You're just saying like, I'm either going to jump and whether I quote unquote fail or not, it really doesn't matter because whatever, if I wipe out one time, I'll just get back up and do it again until I get it right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. I, mean, I like that you, yeah, you got to take essentially like, into the court, you know? so, like mentally, you know, you can't lose at that point. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, you, you're going to succeed at, at no, no matter what. And, uh, you know, you're plus you, you, I mean, we, we, we knew that people that were sponsored doing this stuff were also, you know, old, older kids and the older guys, like, uh, you know, the, the ones that were at the triple X games or the, or yeah, XXX games. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no, they were at the X games, but, um, you know, and those, they, they motivated me too, you know, mm -hmm. the, the professionals at the time, uh, you know, they, they were doing some crazy stuff and they were a lot older than us. And, um, we, we figured, you know, we can do it if they can. Mm -hmm. Now coming back from, um, well, you've taken, uh, personally, I've had a lot of injuries myself. I, I broke my ankle, dislocated my finger. I fractured 20 teeth. Uh, I broke my cheekbone and, uh, I broke my thumb, I think, uh, and then some other injuries, but you probably took the worst fall of all. You broke your femur and you were in a wheelchair for, you know, months on end. I remember that we had to, you know, to come kick it at your house. Like we'd come and your mom was all pissed off and blaming us for being bad influences for, for trying to get you to skate and shit. And then we, you know, we'd sneak off onto your patio and we'd be smoking cigarettes in the wheelchair. But, um, I mean, you, here you are standing today. I mean, you took the worst fall and you're still fucking, uh, on your game and still, you're still here, you know, no failure, you know, that's, what is it like to go through an experience like that? I mean, you weren't able to walk for what, six months? Yeah, man, it, it was hard. I mean, especially because I, I was I was bedridden for three months straight, and uh, that was the hardest part, not being able to get out of bed. Can you can you take uh, us back to like the incident, how that happened? Yeah, I was uh, leaving school, um, and I knew that uh, uh, the sponsorship video was coming up soon for the soap shoes, and the company was looking for uh, to sponsor a team of of what maybe you know a group of. Uh, just our group, pretty much. They wanted to sponsor our group of uh, inline skaters to be in the upcoming Soap Shoes video. Uh, uh, and uh, they wanted to open up the store and everything. So I wanted to go to the park and uh, hit up that handrail that I had successfully busted out many times. And, you know, I, I just went and just said, I'm going to go stop by the park and I'm just going to do it a, you know, a couple of times as a, as a normal routine. This is the, I had my the, the peach rail, right? The kink rail? It was the kink rail. Mm -hmm. And I had my backpack on. And I didn't, I didn't feel like I needed to take it off or nothing because I felt confident that I could do it. Mm -hmm. So I, I did it. And, and apparently the, you know, 
somebody, I know there was uh, skateboarders in that area that liked to wax, put wax on the handrails because it was like, uh, you know, they, they knew that rollerbladers couldn't really slide on handrails with wax on them. And it just happened to be super slick this time that I jumped on it. Uh, I, I slid so fast that when I hit the knot on the on the rail in the middle of the, the kink, I just flew off of it, you know, both feet. And I just flew over the next uh, uh, flight of stairs and just landed straight on my leg. And uh, I heard a big, loud pop and I couldn't move. I tried to stand up and I just heard a crack and I couldn't move. Um, then, you know paramedics were called and they had to cut my jeans off and shit and put all the uh, necessary stuff and pop it into place. Um, that was one of my stuff, you know, I mean, uh, the hardest part was when the doctor told me that I, I wasn't going to be able to do any type of extreme uh, sports or weightlifting for the rest of my life or if I wanted to get a career, it, it's going to have to be behind a computer desk because I couldn't... Uh, do anything with weightlifting or anything that in, that consisted of lifting any type of weight with my elbows, because mm -hmm. I shattered my elbow at the when I was practicing. Uh, you know, I was with you. As a matter of fact, I, I landed on my right. elbow, and I, you know, and I I went through the whole day of class, uh, the whole school period. You know, from morning to end, and then finally at the end, my uh, math teacher was like. Uh, Hey, man, uh, I used to be a doctor, and that doesn't look too good. And I said, no, it's not broken, because I didn't want to believe that it was broken. Right. Hey. Uh, I remember we were sitting in the, my backpack. You were in the hallway, and you were sitting there trying to, um, you were leaning up, and you're like, ah, my elbow is kind of aggravating me. And we looked at it, and it was, it was like, not really swollen, but it was in a way. And you're like, I think I broke my elbow, but I'm not sure. Man, fuck this shit. And... You just kept going through class after class, and you know, in my mind, I kind of knew it was it was some something was bad. You know, I knew it was broken because I tried to lift my backpack up, my backpack off the ground, and and it just like <laughs> shattered more, and I heard it grind, and I was like, ah, oh, and I, I I made this loud sound, and everybody looked at me, and then I just decided to lift it up with my other hand, and then uh, at the end, my math teacher was she, he was like. You know, I think uh, you need to go home. You broke it, man. That's not, you need to go to a doctor. And I said, you know, I guess I, my mom picked me up at the end. And, mm -hmm. you know, she came and picked me up with a new car that she had just bought. And I was like, oh, my elbow feels better now because I seen a new car in the driveway. I was like, hey, <laughs> these are the things that make you happy when you're freaking young, dude. But uh, yeah, man, that was the that was the first time I broke my elbow, and then I had to lie to my parents. I told them that I, you know, because they didn't want me skating. They knew I would hurt myself. So, uh, you know, it comes with the, the sport. You're gonna you're gonna get hurt. You know it. You got hurt like so many times, man. Mm -hmm. I remember you busted up your chin. You had to get stitches and shit. You know, you oh, got yeah. a lot of stuff on, man. And I, I bet you got scars. And I remember. Seen that video they uploaded on the on on actual on the network where you busted your finger and busted and like it was bent all the way in a, like a ninety degree angle. Remember that? Right, right. So I mean, that was um, the that was a week before uh, Sarah and I got married, and when they that one didn't break, it just dislocated and they popped it back, but it never went back down to the size, and it was we thought it was a bad omen because it was. A week yeah. before the wedding, and we went to try the rings on that we had just bought, and the ring wouldn't fit over my finger, so we had to buy a, a whole new ring for me, like basically last minute. <laughs> Man, yeah, you know, I mean, it, like, like I said, you know, it comes with the territory. If you're gonna do stuff like that, you get, you're, you expect to get hurt, mm -hmm. so you're gonna get hurt. You just better have some health insurance, you know, or some a way to cover your your expenses because you know you're you're gonna get hurt. But that's how you get better. You get, get hurt, you get up and try it again, you heal. Um, you know, I was on a cast, and I, I for, for like a month and a half on my elbow, and I was still trying to get good skating with a cast on, trying to bust out rails and stuff to try to get better. Uh, you know, and I ended up falling on my cast and, and everything. And that, right after I got off my cast, I ended up, breaking my elbow again, the same one, you know, I shattered it again, and then I broke my other elbow on the other side, and I had to get <laughs> surgery, so, I mean, 
I mean, it just that's probably that's probably what stopped me at the end after my femur. That's my last break, and uh, I, you know, I I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it anymore. Uh, plus, we moved out of the state, and mm -hmm. I left all you guys behind. So, mm. I, I remember that it wasn't even healed yet, and you were just like, "Fuck this! I got I got to grind something." And you sit there, put um those the big ass elbow pads over your cast, and you were still out there grinding. And uh, the girls at the school, they're like, he, he's going to break it again. Like, uh. they're all hating and shit. But um, I remember the addiction. It was like, oh, I woke up and was like, you know, I, you know, we'd be up at fucking 3.30 in the morning heading over to the school to be there at 4 o'clock to grind on the bus bench. It was just like, oh, man, I got to grind something now. I know, man. So, uh. Yeah, you know, I got, I got, I got high hopes for the uh, the industry as a whole, man. I wish in the future I can see it in the Olympics, maybe, you know, uh, or in the X Games. Uh, who knows, man? You just never know where it's gonna head. Uh, like, like I said, it's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting to see it go down. Um, United States too. It's, I mean, like I said, the internet's why worldwide. Everybody's on the internet one way or another. Mm. So they'll be able to upload videos now with their phones instead of carrying, uh, you know, little like uh, video cameras we carried around that were heavy and stuff. Now they can just get get their phones. Heck, you even got drones that can fly and get excellent footage of people doing some awesome tricks. That you know, you can get great views, great angles, and. Uh, it's just the sky's the limit now, man. Mm. It's just so interesting to see where it's gonna head. Man, that's 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 uh, pretty insightful right there. Yeah, I noticed that um, social media is really changing the way that the community's basically getting together as well. Before, you know, it was just our little circle. If we didn't know anyone else, it was like unless you saw someone with a Senate shirt or a 976 shirt. Then yeah, yeah. you wouldn't even know that they're a skater, and now you could just go on Facebook and type in. Like I just recently joined. Um, like I just typed in Las Vegas Rollerbladers, and there it was. Las Vegas Bladers was like a group, and there's 137 dudes in that group that are all skating at the parks. And now I can just I can go through a file and be like, oh, this guy seems like he's on my level, whatever. Like, and I hit him up and say, hey, uh, where are you guys skating today? And he's like, oh, we're gonna be over at fucking um craig ranch or whatever and then be like fuck swoop me up let's roll and uh it's a cool way to connect and meet new friends and anyone can just start a group now and before like us in the 90s it was like if i wanted to skate i had to i had to go to a pay phone and dial your pager number <laughs> and then fucking put in our little skate code like we're skating whatever and then you have to call me back at the payphone if it even accepted incoming calls. And then I'm like, hey, we're over here skating the high curb at the high school. Do you want to come down? And uh, yeah. that's crazy. Now I could just go on my on my iPhone and be like, boom, FaceTime. Hey, bro, check out this rail right here. You want to skate or do it? See, that, I mean, it's a, it's a lot different now, man. It's a, it's a lot different. So it's a different ball game, I think. So, I, uh, you know, the 90s were fun. Uh, I'm never gonna forget the '90s. Uh, it's definitely something that uh, kind of, I might say, started the whole soap shoes thing. Uh, it, it actually did. It, the '90s started the whole thing. So, um, you know, the, the friends you meet uh, when you were sponsored, you traveled the the U.S., you met a lot of people, you got a lot of connections, you you met, you learned a lot about people. You also learn about the industry yourself. Um, you know, you got a chance to uh, not only meet new people, but also learn who to stay away from in the industry when they try to screw you over. Mm. Uh, you know, and uh, I think uh, I think that those are the years that I'm never going to forget. And be honest with you, I mean, going even though we didn't have the technology to uh, you know call up on a Skype or nothing, it was fun to be able to. Uh, just pick up the phone and say, hey, man, I'm going to be uh, skating at such and such place or or just go to a regular spot and, and at a certain time of the day and knowing that you're going to meet a whole group of your local skaters. You know, we had a, a small little quit 
that we used to get together with and skate every single time. So that was fun. Um, not going to forget those years, you know. Do you have like a specific favorite memory? Um, yeah, man. Uh, I, one of my favorite memories was at uh, the Hacienda Hotel rail because mm. it was just long. It was a long handrail. It had a it had fifty three steps, and it was a straight shot. And uh, we were trying to make the perfect video to to bust out that that rail. And I remember, you know, we had uh, the camera rolling. Everybody had skates on, you know, and and I and you had to maneuver the camera at a at a lower angle to kind of get an upper view of the skater with the with the blade so sometimes we had to roll really low to the ground and and just handing our drinks off passing it to the person with the camera right before you bust out the rail those you know making it fun like that and then sliding down a long ass rail just made it super freaking tight you know it just made it look nice and i just remember those type of moments that uh made the uh experience a lot more exciting and more interesting the end of the day, we go at your house and the, or my house or our uh, Greg's house uh, or Craig Craig's house, um, and we we you know look at the video footage and see what we've done, and then you like getting into your editing mode and you start editing everything, putting music into the videos. You know that's the type of stuff that made everything interesting and made the sport more enjoyable. So that's my favorite memories. Cool, cool, cool. That's awesome stuff. Um, any advice for uh, anyone starting up today? Yeah, absolutely, man. Just uh, if you're going to start the sport, whether it's inline skating or soaps, soap shoes, uh, just uh, go get you a pair of shoes. Don't let anybody think or, or tell you that you can't accomplish what you want to accomplish. You want to be a professional soaper, then go out there. And look and start small and finish big, man. Just uh, mm. don't ever stay at one place. Always try new new things with your soaps, and uh, you'll 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 reach new levels that you've never imagined. Uh, yeah, pretty much it, man. Start small and finish big. I like it, bro. Finish, yeah, finish big. You will finish big as long as you start small. You, you'll be able to finish big because you're never going to stop learning. Uh, you know, you just got to keep keep trying new things with your soaps. That's fucking sick, man. All right, bro. We're running out of time here. Thank you for your time. If the guys at home want to give a hold, get a hold of you, what kind of con excuse me, what kind of a uh, contact information could they use? Uh, you know, they can uh, they can hit me up on Facebook. Just look me up under uh, Joey Ruiz, R-U-I-Z, and, uh, you know, let me know if you're a, a, a soaper or an inline skater fan and uh, and you like doing the sport, and I'll add you right to my list, man. I, I like having friends like that. Cool, cool. I don't give out my personal phone, but, you know, not at this moment at least, but maybe another time. For sure. Start small, finish big. Ladies and gentlemen, Jose Ruiz. Nice, nice talking to you, man. It was a pleasure speaking to you again. Ryan J, J to the B. Talk to you later, brother. I'll, I'll definitely have to hit you up in Vegas, man. We're going to get together and party out. We've got to ride on the Mustang again and uh, mm. drop top. And you got to come visit, you know, we'll go to Florida, go to L.A., take a drive to Las Vegas from L.A. That's always fun. I can't wait, bro. Uh, every time we go out there, we always, um, well, shit, you know, you know what happens. Yeah. <laughs> we got to do something different. We got to go to Mexico or something, cross the border since we're down in L.A. anyways. We got to do something more interesting. I've never done that shit. Ooh, okay. You know? Or, hey, got to go to Colorado. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Some of that, some of that, uh, what did you call it? Lechuga. Some of the lechuga. Some of that lechuga, man. Some of that hippie lettuce. Is that how, how you know, that's what they say over there. It's the new Amsterdam. So, hey, if it's legal, might as well enjoy it, man. Mm. I see the new tattoo you got over there, man, on that hand. It's pretty, pretty crisp. 
Well, it's a it's a it's a maple leaf. I'm a I'm a Justin Bieber fan. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's, that's right. what that's what I tell him at my you know in my if I'm at work. Keep it on the DL. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. okay, cool. All right, player. Peace.